and you came here. So thank you so much for being on this team. We're all better uh, for, for your, your experience in the game. Um, what we'd love to do is split you up um, to have a couple small group um, planning and sharing sessions. As our um, email talked about, we'd really like to do this as much as possible as um, a workshop uh, in its format to give us an opportunity to think about how we might integrate that way of being in our English 1S sections, right? Since 1S is designed to function more like a learning community, more like a workshop, then sharing that learning um, is, is part of how we do that, right? How we help students to think about that English and the way that have to here. So we want to do some of that um, as well as today. So we have nine of you, so maybe four of you to one spot and five of you to another. For about 20 minutes, what we're going to do is just divide the room. We'll make two um, discussion and share out groups. So if you brought ideas um, and you hopefully also brought questions, then we'll work for about 20 minutes to create some knowledge and, and talk together. Um, and then we'll swap. And then we'll come back and, and share and go from there. So maybe this side of the room, this side of the room, um, four or five of you that are English faculty, so you two can interlope wherever you want to be. Um, how about working on engaging and sustaining creation of the first one to two course units and planning how to engage student writers. And then a group over here, four or five of you on affective domain planning, creation of activities and assessments that explicitly recognize affective domain Cool. Yep. Do you? I just wanted us to come back as a group for our last uh, 15 minutes and maybe do a bit of just you know sharing sharing out on what was really valuable in like what, either what good ideas briefly or what was really valuable about this way of engaging with each other um, to share the learning um, and or a quick think space on how might you use an environment like this online environment for some of the things Well, I, I I think there should be some time to also comment in a way um, about the one S class, okay. but, um, sort of as it's sort of a larger iterative. Okay. Like locating what we're doing, what we've discovered through this process, um, in some sort of more abstract way, so we so metacognitively think about. Okay. The frame we're bringing to it. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like maybe that would be? Is that like maybe more pressing first to kind of make sure we go there and then. Well, it's only, it, it only feels pressing to me because it's pressing against the, my forehead now because I was inspired by to think about things in a way, but it's not pressing for our needs. So <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, you know, it's, it's physically, it's again. physically pressing yeah, on your yeah, butt. Yeah, I'm actually lean forward, lean forward. forward. Lean forward. <laughs> lean against it. Lean <laughs> All right. So something on any of those areas? Yes. Yes. I was going to say I think the most inspiring thing that I think is the fact that. We talk about the establishment of the discourse community, where we're no longer just uh, confined to a given paradigm, but now we have a multiple set of discourses that we can begin to teach and begin to interface with, upon with our, with our students. And I think that's a very important thing to understand, because this is a critical element as we move over into 1S, we translate the discourse community from the electoral part to the actual writing section and the writing support, where they can actually apply that, those terms. When we talked about the effective domain, I mean, some amazing I mean, there's some brilliant strategies now that we discussed to be able to really inspire students to continue to carry on with that. To take it from whatever space we create for them in the 16 weeks we have with them and to continue on with that into the other discourses and disciplines that they're going to engage in. And I think it's a very important thing to consider that that discourse community makes the kind of central trope of our instruction with, with this um, the, the English 1A as it's developing, evolving. Thank you. I just want to say last semester I felt very, very isolated because I was a brand new teacher. I was teaching 150 and it was dying. And I was one of the only teachers <laughs> teaching it. And I like the whole, at the beginning I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Nobody needs this class. And, uh, and uh, this semester I feel, I feel much, much less isolated this semester. So I'm just, I'm, even if we didn't necessarily think of the parameters of our prompts for the first 
time around. I'm just really appreciating the opportunity to sit down with colleagues. And, I mean, I'm here on Friday anyway, so it's not any new for me. But I really, really appreciate the opportunity to sit down and, and talk about this stuff with colleagues. I've been much, much less alone this semester than I did last semester. Relief and bounds. You can imagine that if, if you were a student, yeah. newly arrived to the college experience, mm -hmm. both what, what you and Jeff have said, I mean, it really indicates um, the power there, there is in being together and authentically encountering one another from the places that we inhabit um, and the directions we're headed for. And to, you know, to engage, engage that way is really what I, I always am trying to, to facilitate in my classes. And I feel that somehow the, the 1A revision is as foregrounded for me the provisional and contingent nature of the work we do as writers and as readers, but as group members and community members, that what we're doing is always contingent and it's always provisional with the, the idea that what, what it will lead to will be other sorts of engagements with other groups to build the kind of and actually, just to follow up on that, that's something that we, we talked about here when we talked about the effective domain, you know, um, the importance of English class as self-care. <laughs> and <laughs> and, um, and some, uh, something that you said while you were here, too, just in the way we're rethinking about ourselves as instructors, the very things that we care about with our colleagues, the importance of self-care, the importance of getting together, in groups to talk about the way things work, that's our students too. Like right. We're not different animals. We're right. the same sorts of creatures living and growing and trying to get better at what we do. So that that connection, the student as a person like us, is really part of rethinking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what you are. just said is amazing. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. yeah. Totally. And it isn't like yeah. that's new and yeah. we hadn't realized that before. Thinking about keeping it in the front of our minds rather in the and then the back helps us be more effective each other. I think students have been surprised this semester. That's the biggest like emotional reaction I've gotten from students is the surprise that I legitimately only care about their success. I do not want them to fail. I want them to succeed. And I think that there's been this expectation for most students when they come into college is that there's this butting heads adversarial relationship between them and their professor and their professor is the blockade between them and the final grade and I know that that's the case for some professors and some teachers that, that they are a blockade and their students are in an adversarial relationship with them and they're trying to fight them for that good grade and the surprise I've gotten from students that they're like oh you're gonna you're, you're actually gonna give me the grade that I earned and you're not going to dangle it in front of me you're, you're going to help me pass. You're not going to, you know, uh, pick on me when I'm not succeeding. You're not going to make me feel bad for being absent. You're not going to make me feel bad for missing an assignment. You're just going to sit down with me and try to figure out how to avoid this in the future and how to make up that assignment and stuff. So the surprise I've gotten from students has been simultaneously, like, really important for sticking with the process because it is harder to be this kind of teacher in a lot of ways. It is harder to be a really compassionate teacher understanding and, and will take your makeup work and stuff but at the same time it's also really revealing that this is such an important change this has completely shifted the paradigm in my classroom my students are with me every step of the way we're all trying to get somewhere they're helpful to each other too way more helpful to each other than they were last semester last semester I had students who were like there was a little bit of infighting in my classroom even and so it's just it's and it's so much more me as a person rather than me as this like weird alien that they've encountered that wants them to write essays like i feel like a human being in my classroom again which is really nice <coughs> i never saw you as an alien really <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. um, i have a as you all know i have a small person who's, who does um, lots of illogical so parent and the toddler has been actually, this is going to sound pejorative, I don't mean it to be in any way, actually. But the parent and the toddler has probably been one of the most transformative elements for me as a teacher. Because when I stopped operating from a position of believing that my son was attempting to get one over on me. Yes. 
When instead, when he does something, I respond by asking, why might this be? Giving him the benefit of the doubt and coming alongside the prayer first. Everything else will be easier. And so I thought, like, why isn't that the position that I operate from as a teacher? What in my learning about being a teacher taught me that was the wrong approach? Why, why was I taught that I should assume they will break the thing and plan in advance for that, and then when they break it, respond as if I always assumed it would happen? And how do I undo the layers of that? Um, and it's all about that. It's all about that, that non-cognitive caring, right? Thinking about how do I play in my classroom, and, and how do I help them bring their whole people here, and what do I do me, you know, as part of that. And, I mean, I can, I can read a million things on it, but frankly, I, I think having a small person like that now is a helpful piece of like, nope, this is, there's a different way we can do this. It takes a lot of time. You're probably like the alien. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm totally the yeah. alien. Yeah. Do you have him, or does he have you? I, you know? Or he's like the alien. I think he will ask that question. He's popped into the world lives. in your house yeah. through yeah. your stomach, right? Yeah. <laughs> So we're scheduled to go until 12.15. Yep. We are. Okay. Um, we, we also, we haven't addressed uh, explicitly the one S. Um, and the only, um, the only thing that, that Nick and I really thought to be addressed at this point about the one S is to identify it as a writing workshop class. That it is not a, um, a stand and deliver extension of lecture, nor is it um, a sitting there waiting for students who are working independently to come to you, like a tutorial where they're all independently working. It really is a space for collaborative engagement. And um, you know, I, I really value a diversity of teaching uh, persona uh, that we, I believe that we all should be bringing to the table our authentic and true selves that for the job we do and care about students. Um, and I don't, I would, I would never as a colleague um, try to dictate parameters around what anyone else would be doing in their professional capacities as, as instructors, right? Um, but, I, but I do really feel strongly about the 1S um, being a space for student work and student, student um, development of their own identity as capable and enfranchised members of a learning community. And how that looks is going to vary depending on how each of us is with, with, with people and what our and, and how that assembly of persons in that particular instance develops certain needs. But but it really is a, meant to be a workshop um, is kind of the main point of it. Um, and that workshop uh, formula is is really um, based to, for those of you that have done CAP training. Um, that really is where low stakes collaborative activities and the just in time remediation. And, and, and frankly, just the idea of a community practice. Right? Community if practice. if yeah, we think exactly. instead of, like, we think of this as a community practice, right? We are a community practice. But so too are your students with each other. That one S space becomes a place where they're engaging in that community practice work, where they're advancing their own knowledge, they're working with each other, they're supporting each other. And then your role is, is alongside that. However, you, you create that community of practice to work. I mean, I think that's where that real key of, of CAP comes in is it's one part maybe backwards design and it's one part just in time remediation, but it's really about thinking how do you create a community that values each person and sees the shared knowledge? I mean, no different than, I'm thinking of your creative writing classes too, right? The idea that in a creative, in a creative writing class, teaching how to being in a workshop is probably part of exactly what you do to facilitate the learning, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and if you have some good, for folks who do teach the creative writing classes, if you have some good tips on how you create that community building in those workshops and you wanted to add that insight in there. so much anymore, but I used to say, go into your CD collection, find your old CD, and you'll <laughs> <laughs> the thing that you can't stand listening to. I still
still do it, but I tell them, look, I know most of you don't have CDs, so go to a thrift store, buy a really cheap, bad CD, bring it. If there's something that you use to listen to, bring it to class, and we're going to trade them, and we can get somebody else to accept it. Or I tell them, bring your, bring your favorite book off your bookshelf, or start with a book that you can tell me what to do. So I do a lot of that kind of stuff. It just creates community to get them to laugh with one another, to um, draw them into the, kind of the core of what we're doing. And those things are really helpful. So the other thing I do at the end of the community is I tell them, okay, everybody go to the Poetry of Richard. He's going to submit a polished piece to this book club. So the poetry is free for all of you to come away and take this and tell your five or six friends. And you're going to submit it to this book club. They're going to print the whole thing, and then everybody's going to buy it. They're going to read it through. It's probably going to be up to twelve to everybody at the book club. So there's a big community closing with you. And in addition, the artists, the artwork for the cover is always done by a student in the class, and they get to choose who the artist's work is that they want on the cover. So by the time we finish, you know, like there's a feeling of ownership and pride in having created this thing. So stuff like that. And if we, yeah. can, if we can do that kind of same thing with active inquiry, yeah. okay. we'll be doing great things for people. I, oh, we're over. So, okay. no. But if any, uh, I'm teaching 1L right now. And I just want to say really quickly that what I do with my students is I say, after the 1A class ends and, and the 1L students stay behind, because it's not everyone, like it will be one else. I say, well, what do you want to do? And and they decide what we do. Right. And and cool. so always there's a separation between the lab and the class. Right. And and always it's led by them. And the, the awesome. one option is you not leaving early. <laughs> but <laughs> often they want to work together in groups. They want to continue something that we've been doing in a lesson that they they didn't understand. Sometimes can you please talk to us about run on sentences? <laughs> and so then I'll do a little impromptu thing. Sure. Which is not hard. We can all pull that out of our toolbox. Um, and then occasionally, it, especially if a paper's due, we all go to the lab. And so I'm in the lab, and it's like what our old labs in Del Norte look like. But they have the exigence. They get to decide what we do, and that, that helps to build community. I don't know if that will apply in 1S. But. I think so. Yeah, that's, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's how I do my, my lab. The 102, the 102 lab. Mm -hmm. They pick just just something real quick. Is there a way that as we move into this, you know, revised version of 1A, we'll have some sections. Is there a way that we can do this type of collegial support again, like one or two dates in the coming semester or the next fall and spring, so we can can get together to be able to talk about how's it going, yeah. what are you doing, what are you using? Yeah. Yeah. It seems that like it's been this has been very fruitful. This collaboration has been very fruitful for us to be able to explore where we're heading as a discipline. Right. And it seems like having some type of schedule, but just to say, look, it's out there, you can come if you want to. Yeah. I think it'd be really, it seems to me that would be really helpful. I don't know that, that we'll be able to do it quite like this. I'm not sure the institution will be supporting that with oh, sure. funding, but, um, but it would be great as we all move into the space and have the ability to stop. really hard to go and like visit another teacher's classroom, which I would do a lot when I was working at ILI. You just go sit in and watch somebody else's class. It's a lot harder to do right now. So the classes are so much longer here, for one, and also it's like, I have grading to do. I have so right. much stuff to do outside of this work. So it is nice to be able to sit down and ask someone, what are you doing in your classroom? Because yeah. I can't go and watch. Yeah. So. And it helps us keep the, the digital site I've heard there's I've heard there's amazing meetings. Stuff is awesome. I know I can't wait to go see them. And, um, and so the ideas that came up in our discussions today, if you took notes, even if your notes don't turn into a formal thing, if you're comfortable sharing those notes and those good ideas out, would you be willing to type them up and just put them 
on that site um, so that we can we can help each other and capture good ideas and then we have them and we share them and it's all so I have a big gap where X exists. Visit there. That's yeah, the I canvas mean, site, right? Yeah, yeah I want to keep the canvas site when okay. it just have it be something that's being added to constantly um, throughout at least the next couple of years. Yes, please. So build this stuff. And I'll send you an yeah. email when I get the stuff up on advertising the syllabus. I have it all, I just mm -hmm. haven't collated it yet. Um, but there's, there's, I've, I've put some feelers out, received a whole lot of feedback and resources there to ways of inquiring of, of your own syllabus and your rubrics and how, how you with those or critically analyze those for the places that um, bring students in, but maybe also students out in ways that you can use. Thank you all. Um, our students, the College of Redmond students, are extremely lucky, lucky to have each and every one of us. Cheers. Thank you, you too, oh, also, yeah. for getting it together for us. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you all. As a last little plug, it's about $10,000 From this year to pay for a training so. for next I, year? I mean, I, Justine, you, you might know better. But I, you, you kind of have to because it's the reading apprenticeship training is a year long. Yeah. Well, I'm not talking about that whole thing. Yeah. I'm just talking about individuals yeah. asking for the money to take the. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think so. I think you can. The training doesn't department. have to be completed before no. the end of. Okay. No, no, no. no. Okay. When do you get funded to do something? I got to go somewhere. Right. Thank, Thank you David. so much, Thank David. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. Something to think about because I don't know what that money just goes away. Faculty don't need to develop themselves. Yeah, it would be on the request. And they're doing it's cool. They're doing RA stuff for STEM too right now. Oh, so yeah. like it's great to know that our partners in math and science are going to have tailored work that they're also doing on developing reader identities and thinking about those pieces. It's going to be cool. So what's the cool. what's the course number for that? Reading apprenticeship. I'll just send you the email. Thank you. Do you have a way? It's like reading apprenticeship 101 or something. Okay. Like that. You could put it on the campus oh, site. I'll add it there. Yeah. Or oh yeah. You a, well, if you have the link, better one. send it, and I'll I'll ask Mika too to see if she can send that. If anybody wants to have lunch, yeah. Yeah. I brought.